three. Welcome everybody to our little Bible study and today we are covering Galatians chapter one and I'm so excited about this lesson and I'm so delighted that we have so many women here. We have eight women. We have an Annette and Terry and Carrie. Uh, Carrie and Annie and Lynn and Patty and Nancy and me. <laughs> okay. All so and this now is going to be very exciting. And the question is, why Paul? And accursed? Why does Paul say, let them be accursed if they don't preach the gospel that he preached? Okay, and I have a, a frog here, and um, we're going to be, you know, talking about him a little bit in a minute, in a minute. Okay, because, well, let's talk about him now. Okay. Okay, so, I have a question. If I kiss the frog over and over again, is it going to turn into a prince? No. 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 And how about if I put makeup on him and then kiss him? No. Can I gussy him up? No. no. A frog is just going to stay a frog. And this frog represents our flesh. So we can't kiss our flesh and make it better. Our flesh cannot be reformed. Our flesh is corrupt. We are in fallen bodies and they're not going to get any better and there's nothing that we can do to make them better they cannot be reformed they need to be crucified it's the only solution okay so we're going to be talking about things like that but let's get into our lesson so we're taking a closer walk or a closer look at the scriptures so we can have a closer walk with God because the deeper we go into the scriptures and understand what God is saying the deeper our walk with God is going to be and so we're doing Galatians chapter 1 why Paul and accursed why does he say that in chapter 1 and so um, we're going to look at these verses in this chapter who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. So, why do good things, uh, bad things happen to good people? Because we live in a, fallen in a fallen, present evil world and in a fallen body. Mm -hmm. And we make stupid choices yeah. <laughs> and time and chance happens to everyone. So, um, that's Galatians 1.4. And then Paul would say, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is very important for us to know because Paul received it by revelation for Jesus Christ. Just as Moses was the spokesperson for Israel, Paul is the spokesperson for the body of Christ in this dispensation of grace that we live in. So, another gospel? Paul is going to say, you know, talk about another gospel. And what's that? And what is the gospel that Paul is preaching? We need to know what it is. Okay? So, um, let, we're going to start with a song. Let me see if I can get the song off. And um, we're going to have audience participation. Okay. Because this, I picked this song because it kind of talks about, you know, in times like these. And the times that we're living in right mm -hmm. now. Yeah. In mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. like these, you need a Savior. In times like these, you need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus, yes, he's the one. 
This jock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure, be very sure, your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. In times like these, you need the Bible. In times like these, oh, be not idle, be very sure. Be very sure your anchor holds and grips a solid rock. Okay, so we want to make sure that we're safe, number one. Because if we have not believed the right gospel, we may very well not be saved. Okay, and we want to make sure that we're going to be taken up at the rapture because that's when the sons of God will be revealed because we can't fake it with God he knows our hearts and he knows that we have believed the right gospel without perverting it and so how do we pervert it we pervert it by adding to what Christ has accomplished on the cross when he died for our sins was buried and rose again the third day if we say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, I have to be water baptized, <laughs> don't I? No, we can't add anything that we do to his perfect finished work, or we nullify it. That's not what saved us. Yeah, we were saved by his work alone. Christ alone, the Son of God, plus nothing. So it's faith in what he's done, plus nothing. Okay. So let's move on. Um, Jesus said, oh no, who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean, not one, okay? So in Job 14.4, Job is asking, who can bring something clean, a clean human being, out of an unclean human being? So if a mother gives birth to a child, the mother who's a sinner, how can that child that's born become, a, you know, clean? So that's the question. Okay, and um, when the Lord Jesus Christ was here on earth, he asked the woman caught in adultery, um, and, you know, uh, where are your accusers? And she said, no man... Lord, and Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. John 8, 11. So how can someone that's, you know, been an adulteress sin no more? Mm -hmm. That's strange, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's begin with a word of prayer and we'll talk about this. Mm -hmm. Dear Father God, in Jesus' name we come before you and we thank you for your holy word. And we thank you, Lord, that you have accomplished everything necessary to save us on the cross of Calvary with your death, burial, and resurrection for our sins. And we pray that you would help every one of us to have listening ears to hear what you say in your word to us. And that um, many people will come to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so um, we're going to talk about how God solved the sin problem. How an unclean person can become a clean person. And we're going to be talking about how, um, this a little bit. So, the adulteress represents Israel. Mm -hmm. Israel was an adulterous nation to God. She was committing idolatry. And she wasn't the nation that God wanted her to be. And so God is going to institute the new covenant at his second coming. And that's how Israel is going to be able to sin no more. Okay. So isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. But uh, we're going to be talking about the problem is... What we've just said, you know, how can a sinner 
be justified and stand before holy God without being obliterated. Because holy God cannot stand for anything that is not holy without, you know, it being obliterated. So, mm -hmm. and then God has come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. And that is the gospel that Paul, the apostle of the Gentiles, is preaching and telling Peter about mm -hmm. in chapter 2. So, we have a timeline of the five times that Paul um, went to Jerusalem after his conversion on the road to Damascus. So Paul is the same as Saul of Tarsus, the same person. So he um, visited Jerusalem five times, and it's important to know when they were. So we're just going to get, we're not going to go deep into this chart today. We're going to do that next week. But we know that um, in 34 AD, or by 34 AD, the Lord Jesus Christ had died for our sins. And then um, a year later, Stephen was stoned. And that was about a year after the Holy Ghost came down on Pentecost. First martyr. First martyr. And so... Um, one of the people that was standing by at his stoning was Saul of Tarsus, and he committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. And so he could not be saved in this world or in the world to come. So we're going to find out a little bit about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost in a little while. So in Acts 9 was Saul's con conversion on the road to Damascus. And he came... Um, to Jerusalem three years after his conversion, around 38 A.D. Then um, he went um, back to Jerusalem in about 44 A.D. for his second visit with Barnabas to bring some money in Acts 12.25. Then his third visit was with Barnabas and Titus at the, um, you know, in A.D. 52 to the Jerusalem Council. And then his fourth visit was after he made a vow um, to uh, bring his hair, <laughs> a Nazarite vow, in Acts 18.22. And then the last visit to Jerusalem was in Acts 21.17 when he came to Jerusalem with a delegation to bring some money to the poor little flock Peter's group, from Paul's group, and he was, you know, arrested in the temple, and he was in Caesarea for two years, and then brought as a prisoner to Rome, where he was in prison for two more years. So we'll go over that more next week. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how, you know, sin. So Paul said... Wherefore, as by one man, and that man is Adam, mm -hmm. sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. So, not only do we inherit the sin nature from Adam, we have all sinned also, all every one of us. So... That's in Romans 5.12. So we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem, right? <laughs> yeah. We are sinners, born sinners, and we sin. Um, so our job after we're saved is to be ambassadors and to get everyone out of Adam and into Christ. Okay, and, and Paul said that those people who go to hell shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. 2 Thessalonians 1.9 So we know that's not where we want to go. And he also said in 1 Corinthians 15.56 Okay, that was uh, 2 Thessalonians 1.9. Okay. He said, The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Okay, so this is very important to know. If we put ourselves under the law, 
we are going to increase our sin. The strength of sin is the law. Okay? So we want to make sure that we're under grace and not mm -hmm. under law. Mm -hmm. So if we don't rightly divide the word of truth, we are going to put ourselves under the law. And we're going to be, make ourselves worse sinners. Okay? So what do we have to believe in order to be saved? Okay? No one can come before the Holy Father without the imputed righteousness of Jesus Christ. This is God's solution. His Son's imputed righteousness. So we need to believe the gospel for today. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. And Paul told the jailer, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So we don't believe on ourselves. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we receive his imputed righteousness. Because without that imputed righteousness, no one will be able to stand before the Holy God. Okay. <clears throat> All right. We are going to find out um, that... Okay, if everyone can look over here for a second. Sin began actually with Lucifer, because Lucifer iniquity was found in Satan. Who be, well, he became Lucifer became Satan in heaven. Then, after it began there, it continued with Adam and Eve, because Satan convinced, you know, tricked Eve into eating that fruit, and Adam and Eve disobeyed God, and so. Sin entered the human race. Okay? That's how it, it started. Now, in Galatians, chapters 1 and 2 are the easiest two chapters for understanding right division. So you're here at a good time. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to find out in this uh, letter that the law neither justifies a sinner or sanctifies a believer. Okay, so the law can't do that. The purpose of the law is to condemn. To condemn and show us the need for a Savior. So, um, day is when Christ is present, and night is when Christ is absent. So we're living in the present evil world. We're in a, a night time, because Christ is not with us. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about imputed righteousness. Okay. So, when a person believes the, the gospel, his um, sins, see if we can get this off, are placed on, on Jesus. Whoopsie. Uh -oh, <laughs> sorry, Patty. <laughs> You're okay, I'm drawing. <laughs> okay. Looks like a person. Uh, yeah. So, it does. It looks like uh -oh. a person. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Well, Jesus. we get the idea. Yeah. Our sins are placed on Christ, and... We receive his righteousness. Okay, there. We receive his righteousness. Okay, so our, um, God puts our sins on Christ. Otherwise, they're retained. Okay? And we receive his righteousness. Because even though the sins are paid for, in order to have the righteousness and be saved, we have to believe. Okay? And here it says, For if when we were enemies... We were reconciled to God by the death of his son. Much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. So the imputed righteousness is the same thing as his life in us, mm -hmm. son's life. And it's the same thing as his spirit in us. So in Romans, we find out in the first five chapters, we learn about justification. Righteousness is received by faith. And then in 6 through 8, we he talks about sanctification. How we can be instruments of righteousness and serve God. So these two chapters, Paul is going to be, I mean, um, this for these first eight chapters is what Paul is going to be addressing in Galatians. 
he's going to be correcting them from not following those instructions in Romans 1 through 8. Okay? Then we have in Romans 9 through 11, the dispensational section, where Paul talk, says that God is now showing mercy to the Gentiles because Israel has fallen as a nation. And then in chapter um, 12 through 16, it's the practical doctrinal section. In Romans. Okay, so let's introduce our lesson. Where's my pointer? Uh oh, don't tell me I, I left it out in the kitchen. Can I use your sword? Yeah, it's in the kitchen. Yeah, you want to see? Uh, I don't want you to miss anything though, Nancy. Okay, so Galatians chapter 1. Paul marvels at the Galatians quick fall for another gospel. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I need you to, or did you find it? Okay, thank you. Because I'll use the sword later when I show you how to rightly divide. Okay, so um, Galatians chapter 1, Paul marvels at the Galatians quick fall for another gospel. Um, verses 1 through 5, Paul clearly states the gospel of Christ. 6 through 10, if anyone preaches a gospel other than Paul's, let him be accursed. And 11 through 24, okay, I want you to remember that it is Christ speaking through Paul. Okay, it's not Paul. Um, 11 through 24, Paul defends his separate, distinct apostolic ministry from Christ. So we're going to be looking at some of the questions we might have when we come to this chapter. Why Paul? When was Paul saved? Mm. How many times did Paul visit Jerusalem after his conversion? And the answer is... Five. Correct. <laughs> That's because Patty did the time. <laughs> okay. In what year were these visits? We've already gone over that. Uh, what is the hymn that the Galatian had been so soon removed from in verse 6. What is the grace of Christ? Why does Paul say, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, let him be accursed? What does accursed mean? Why is Paul so vehement? Which is the <clears throat> church of God in verse 13? What is my mother's womb in verse 15. How is Christ revealed in Paul in verse 16? Um, why did Paul make a point of saying he did not confer with flesh and blood, but with, but went to Arabia and returned to Damascus? Um, why did Paul say he was unknown by face unto um, the churches in Judea which were in Christ? And what is the timelines of Paul's visits to Jerusalem? So we've done much of that. Let me pull this down without knocking over the felts. Because I have felts for you today. And I, I hope I won't knock them down before I do them. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about the timeline that's embedded in the Bible. Okay. So the timeline that's embedded in the Bible follows the order of the books in the Bible. So God has embedded it there for us. So um, Genesis through Acts is prophecy. Romans to Philemon is mystery. Then Hebrews to Revelation is prophecy again. So we begin the Bible with Adam. And after a time, God calls out Abraham and makes his own nation out of Abraham and makes a distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision. And then he gives the law. Then, after 400 years of silence, comes Matthew through John, the four gospel, Christ's earthly ministry. At the end of that time, Christ dies on the cross, is buried, and rises again. Then he's here for 40 days, and he says, 
that he's going to send the promise of the Father, which is the Holy Ghost, upon Peter's group. So he does, ten days later, on Pentecost. And Peter preaches, and they have a one-year extension of mercy to let this nation of Israel know that they killed their Messiah. And they didn't repent. They stoned Stephen instead. That was their answer. So God, instead of sending the 70 years of trivial, seven years of tribulation, the 70th year of Daniel's prophecy, the seven years of tribulation were not sent. <clears throat> instead, um, Jesus Christ saved Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus and began a new dispensation of grace in which we're living now. And uh, so this is the dispensation of grace. And these people over here will live on earth. These people over here will live in heaven. These people over here will live on earth. Okay? So we're living... Uh, God divides it, uh, the, it into past, present, and future. Time past, but now, ages to come. So, our dispensation ends with the rapture of the body of Christ, which God is forming at this present time. Then, there will be the seven years of tribulation, and then God will return, Jesus Christ will return, and um, save the believing remnant, and get rid of his enemies with fire, baptize them with fire, and then he'll set up his 1,000 year kingdom on earth. And um, so on and so forth. And there will be a distinction between the circumcision and the uncircumcision in the kingdom. Because Israel will be a nation of priests to evangelize the rest of the world. Okay, so during um, time past, Peter was the chief apostle. During the dispensation of grace that we're living in now... Paul is the chief apostle. He's the only apostle. Then, after our rapture, and Paul will be one of them, Peter will again be the chief apostle. Because more of Peter's group is going to be saved during the seven years of tribulation. Okay. This is how we rightly divide. Okay? This is it. We have to cut straight. So we cut between when Jesus Christ appears to Paul and when Jesus Christ appears again to rapture the body of Christ. So between these two appearings, okay, we have them over here. One appearing and the last appearing of Jesus Christ. These were unprophesied appearings. Okay, so after Saul of Tarsus was saved on the road to Damascus, he was blinded for three days. And, and that was in Acts 9. Then in Acts 10, Peter has a vision of a sheep coming down three times and being going back up to heaven. And God says, Rise, Peter, you know, eat. And Peter says, No, Lord, I've never eaten anything unclean. And so God says, Whatever I have made clean, don't call that unclean. So God has made the Gentiles clean, and something has happened, and Peter's not sure what, but he goes out of obedience to God, to Cornelius, and Cornelius' family and him and friends get saved, and they speak in tongues to prove it, probably in the Hebrew tongue. So that's very interesting, and that's going to come into play today. So the, our main focus today is going to be on the verses in, um, in Galatians chapter 1 and also on the verses in um, Acts chapter 15. That's my main focus today. So let's talk a little bit about... Um, okay, this is when Paul... In Acts 14, 19 through 20, went on his first apostolic journey with Barnabas. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, 
the thither is Lystra, who persuaded the people, and having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Okay, so Paul was stoned just like Stephen was stoned to death. Howbeit, as the disciples stood around about him, he rose up and came into the city, and the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Acts 14, 19 through 20. So at the end of Galatians, when Paul talks about the marks that he's received on his body, do you think that he might have received some marks from that stoning? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then in 2 Corinthians 11, he talks about all of the times that he was, you know, whipped and came, uh, uh, you know, came with rods and things like that. So the Jews hated him because he preached that circumcision is not needed for the people who are going to live in heaven. Okay, that's something for Israel. So he says, from henceforth, let no man trouble me, for I bear in my body the marks of the Lord Jesus. Galatians 6, 17. So it was the marks of the Lord for he, him serving the Lord. And um, when he remember when he was persecuting the church, mm-hmm. the Peter's group? Well, Jesus had warned Peter's group about that. They shall put you out of the synagogues, yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think he doeth God's service. John 16, 2. So Paul persecuted Peter's group because he thought he was doing God a favor to to eradicate, stamp out genocide of that believing flock. Okay, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that pretty soon. But I didn't want to go on without talking a little bit about the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. Okay, so the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost was mentioned by the Lord Jesus Christ when he was on earth in Matthew 12, 31, and 32. Wherefore I say unto you all, manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto man. But the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto man. And whosoever speaketh the word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh a, against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, the world where Christ was in his earthly ministry, nor in the world to come when he returns at his second coming. And so, um, Stephen said to um, them before he was stoned, Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost, as your fathers did, so do ye. Acts 7.51 So he pronounced that Israel was uncircumcised, like the Gentiles at that time. Okay, and so um, they were stiff neck. They wouldn't turn to look at God. Okay, and Saul of Tarsus was a blasphemer, as he says in First Timothy one thirteen. So if Saul can't be saved in this world or in the world to come, how can he be saved? How can he be saved? if he can't be saved in this world or in the world to come. Well, God had to open up a brand new dispensation of grace for where a blasphemer can be saved. In fact, anyone can be saved today by believing the gospel, no matter how evil they are. Mm-hmm. Okay, so let's, t- let's talk about our chapter. And I'm going to go over here because I want to talk about our chapter while referring to our map. And I know this map is is not that great, but, you know, it's the best I could do at the time. Okay, so it's very important to get the map context. So um, I hope they can see everybody 
including me. Okay, can they see the, the words and the map and me? Okay. All right, so Galatians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. So Paul is an apostle because Jesus Christ and God the Father made him that. And God the Father raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Resurrection to life. He's the first one in a glorified body. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Okay, so Paul is now writing from Antioch. He is writing this letter from Antioch. To the churches in Galatia, which are over here. And so, let's look at some of the churches in Galatia. We have Antioch of Pisidia. This is Antioch of Syria. We have Iconium, Lystra, and Derbe. Those are the cities that he went to on his first apostolic journey. And he was stoned there in Lystra. So he's writing from Antioch. To the Galatian churches. Notice that it's plural. So he had started churches and appointed elders in those places. Grace be to you. Okay, so he's he, there's also brethren with him. Okay, that, um, you know, and he's greetings from them. Grace be to you and peace. From God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul always begins his letters with grace and peace. Because during the dispensation of grace, we have grace and peace with God when we're saved. Mm -hmm. um, grace and peace from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins. So Jesus Christ willingly gave himself for our sins. So Paul has already stated the gospel. Death for sins and the resurrection. Um, okay. That he might deliver us from the present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. So what Christ did in dying for our sins was according to the will of God and our Father. Mm -hmm. And he did it so he could deliver us from the evil world, this present evil world. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel. That's wonder and astonishment. That ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Okay, the hymn that called them was Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. He's preaching through Paul and through other elders um, and other believers. Um, from, from heaven, right? Other believers on earth. Other believers on earth is speaking the gospel as ambassadors. So, and they're speaking the gospel with the Spirit of God in them from heaven. So, that, that's how it works. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have, that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Okay. So, he's pretty clear that his is the only gospel that's valid today. Because even if Paul himself preached another gospel, he should be accursed. Or an angel from heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay? As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So this is Galatians 1. Six through nine. So he, when God repeats Himself, we better perk up and listen. <laughs> okay, 
because he does it for our good. Verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So, Paul is taking a beating because he's a Christ server, not a man pleaser. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel that was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Okay, so this solution to man's sin problem was by revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God, and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' Okay, so he, he wasted it. He wanted to eradicate it, to eliminate it from the, from the earth. He wanted to stamp it out. And profited in the Jews' religion. That one, okay. Here we go. Above many my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. Okay, so the Jews' religion had begun by God as Judaism, but now it's become the Jews' religions because they have perverted the word of God. The Jews have perverted the word of God. Uh, and you know, they have added the traditions of my fathers. Not the pure word of God. You know, they have the, you know, Talmud or whatever. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I confer not with flesh and blood. Okay, so the my mother's womb there is the nation of Israel. So he's been separated out from the nation of Israel and called by his grace, by the grace of God, because remember, he was a blasphemer. He deserved, you know, everlasting destruction, just like all of us. There's hope for all of us. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, all of us deserve <laughs> everlasting destruction. So he, he especially, because he had committed the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost, Okay, so um, he's now going to preach him among the heathen. The heathen is all lost, Jews and Gentiles, unsaved. It, because remember, they're uncircumcised. They're considered Gentiles now. Immediately, I confirm not with flesh and blood. So he didn't talk to humans. Okay, neither uh, went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Okay, so Paul was saved out here, see the pink? On the road to Damascus, outside of Israel is green. In a Gentile country. Okay. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, so he's in a Gentile country on the road to Damascus, just outside the city. And so he's been in Damascus, and he's also gone down to Mount Sinai in Arabia, which is so interesting, you know, because a lot of people thought Mount Sinai was on the Sinai Peninsula, but Paul identifies for us that it's on uh, the uh, Arabian, this side of the Red Sea, because the Red Sea is both of those forts, and right across there, it's 11 miles hmm. of Red Sea where they had found wagon wheels under the water. Wow. Okay, uh, so they found it right there. 11 miles God had to open up the Red Sea for Israel to walk through it. Wow. On dry land. Okay, so isn't that interesting? Okay, so, um, okay, so he went to um, Arabia, you know, to, and then to back to Damascus. Then he went back to Damascus right there. 
Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter. So after he spent three years in this com combination of going to Arabia and, Mount, and Damascus, in about 38 AD, he went up to see Peter in Jerusalem. And it's always up because it's, you know, it's up the mountain. It's on Mount Sinai. Oh, was that? You mean Jerusalem? Yeah, it's on a mount. It's on Mount Sinai. There's a Mount Sinai in heaven, and there's a Mount Sinai on earth. And abode with him fifteen days. So Paul was only in Jerusalem for fifteen days with Peter. But other of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God I lie not. So Paul is defending his apostleship because so many people don't want to acknowledge it, even today. Afterwards, I came into the region of Syria and Cilicia. So after he had spent 15 days in Jerusalem, he went back home to Tarsus, which is Cilicia. It's in Cilicia. Okay? And so the, he preached to his family and friends and the people in Cilicia, and he started churches there in mm -hmm. Acts 9. Hmm. And, he, and um, he also went into the region of Syria. So he went around here and started churches too. And was unknown by faith unto the churches of Judea, which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preaches the faith which he once destroyed, and they glorified God in me. God had really converted this man from a hater to a lover. And so um, that's Galatians chapter 1. And, you know, how could Paul, Peter's group be in Christ before Paul? We're going to talk about that when we do our felts and also when I read the lesson. Okay, but right now I want to look a little bit on um, Acts chapter 15. Okay, let's see where it begins. Whoops. i to find the beginning. Okay. All right, we've done that one. This, this could be it. That's it. The other side. On the other side. side. There yeah. Go. Okay. That's it. All right. So Acts 15, verse 1. Now listen to this, and you're going to see what the problem is. And certain men which came down from Judea. Okay. So this is, Paul has returned to Antioch with Barnabas. And certain men have come down from Jerusalem to Antioch. Okay. Um, taught the brethren there in Antioch. So when they, when they came back from the first apostolic journey, they found out that certain men had come down from Judea and taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Believing in Christ wasn't enough. Mm -hmm. you, gotta be, you get circumcised too. So he's, they're saying that for their justification, they have to be circumcised in order to be justified, saved, or they can't be saved, right? That's what they said in verse 2. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, Luke is writing the letter, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain others of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. Okay, so Paul and Barnabas are going to leave Antioch with Titus. They're going to go to Jerusalem about this question. So when they get there, I don't have all the verses here, of all of chapter 15, but most of it. Thank you, Patty. Um, in 15.5, it, it, it says, 
But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees. Okay, this is at the Jerusalem Council. Which believed. So they're believers in Peter's group. Saying that it was needful to circumcise them and to command them to keep the law of Moses. So now they're not saying, you know, you have to be circumcised to be saved. They're saying you have to be circumcised in order to be sanctified. And you have to keep the law of Moses, these Pharisees, at the Jerusalem Council. Okay. Let's see. Uh, to find the rest of it. Okay. <clears throat> see if it's over here. Yeah. Okay, so that was 15.5. Here's 6. And the apostles and elders came together for to consider this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So this is when Peter preached the gospel of the kingdom to Cornelius. And they believed. Okay, um, whoever works righteousness, whoever w blesses Israel, can be saved if they believe in Israel's God. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost. Remember, they spoke in tongues and received the Holy Ghost? Even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now, therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples? This is put a yoke on the neck of the followers of Paul. Which neither our fathers nor we are able to bear. Okay, so even the Jews couldn't bear the law. It was too hard to do in a fallen human body, even with the Holy Ghost in it. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved even as they. So Peter wants to be saved just as the Gentiles are in the body of Christ. When we get raptured and get our new bodies, they'll get theirs at the second coming. Then all the multitude kept silence and gave audience to Barnabas and Paul. So now everyone's shifting from looking at Peter to looking at Paul and Barnabas. And they are declaring the, what miracles and wonders God had wrought among the Gentiles by them. Because the Jews require a sign. And the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified. We who are saved. Acts 15, 12. So uh, they talked about, you know, when during, in, you know, I think of, uh, how one lame man was healed. You know, all of those things, miracles that Paul did. He also healed a lame man in, um, during that journey. And they did the other signs and miracles. And after they had held their peace, James answered. So James is now answering Peter's question. Peter's question was, nor we were able to bear. We weren't able, you know, why should we put this yoke on, on the uh, disciples of Paul that we couldn't bear the law? Why would we force them to be circumcised and keep the law of Moses? Mm. Okay, so uh, James is answering. Men and brethren, hearken unto me. Simeon, which is another name for Peter, hath declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles, okay, when he went to, to Cornelius. To take out of them a people for his name, and to this agree the words of the prophets. So the words of the prophet did not prophesy this, because they prophesied that Israel would be saved and then the Gentiles. But, but that there would be an, a Gentile salvation, the words of the prophets agreed with that. Okay? And now uh, James is going to quote um, Amos chapter um, 11 and 12. 
um, as it is written, after this I will return and will build again the tabernacle of David, which is fallen down, and I will build again the ruins thereof, and I will set it up. So he's saying that after the tribulation, Christ is going to return and set up the kingdom, the, the Davidic kingdom again. That the residue of men might seek after the Lord. So the rest of the men that weren't saved can then seek after the Lord. And all the Gentiles, upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord, who doeth all these things. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning of the world. God knows what he's doing. He's what James saying. Wherefore, my sentence is that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to God. So, you know, don't make them do those things. But that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols, and from fornication, and from things strangled, and from blood. For Moses of old time hath in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day. So that's where the lost Jews are. The lost Jews are in the synagogues. And it would be easier for the body of Christ to evangelize them if they didn't do things that offended the Jews, like eat pork chops. <laughs> okay? Pork then, it, yeah, then it pleased the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, namely Judas, surnamed Barsabbas, and Silas, chief men among the brethren. So Judas and Silas are going to go with Paul and Barnabas and Titus to um, Antioch to confirm the letters that they're sending. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. It's the apostles and elders and brethren send greetings unto the brethren which are of the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. Whoa, time out. Where are these Gentile churches? Let's look on our map. They're in Antioch. They're in Cilicia, where Paul has been evangelizing, and Syria. So there's Gentile churches there. For as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us, certain that went out from James and Peter, Certain of the little flock believers have troubled you with words subverting your souls, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. That's in Acts 15, 24. So Peter is saying, I mean, James is saying, we didn't send them. They went on their own. But he's admitting that they came from their group. So when they were dismissed, this is verse 30 now. So that was, um, what was that? That was 1524. So we skipped a few uh, verses, and now we're up here. So when they were dismissed, that's Peter and, I mean, uh, Paul and Barnabas and Titus. They're being dismissed now. They came to Antioch, and when they had gathered the multitude together, so say it was a huge church. They delivered the epistle. They read it to them and said, you know, and everyone cheered because we don't have to be circumcised. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. And now this is when I think Galatians was written, in 1535. Paul also and Barnabas continued in Antioch teaching and preaching the word of the Lord with many others also. So during this time that they continued there in Antioch, I believe that word came to Paul that the Galatians are now being circumcised. And so you better write the Galatian letter quick. And he did. He oh. didn't wait for a secretary. <laughs> and he went through Syria. Okay, so here I left out some, they're bickering, Paul and Barnabas are 
are bickering about whether or not to take John Mark, who had left them in Perga. And so um, Paul doesn't want to take John Mark, and so they split. And Barnabas goes to Cyprus, which is his home as an island, and um, Paul went, took Silas and went back to confirm the churches of Galatia. Okay, and and he went through Syria and Cilicia confirming the churches. So first they go to the ones that he started, and then they're going to go on to Galatia for his second apostolic journey with Silas, because each time Paul took one, uh, each of the three journeys, he went to Galatia. Okay. So before we do the felts, let's talk a little bit about our salvation. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And remember I said that, um, you know, Christ took my sin, and I received his righteousness, and then I was baptized into this group called the body of Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. So that was a spiritual baptism. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. So I'm in this group now, and I'm waiting for the rapture. That's what's going on. And it could happen at any time. Okay, so this is the verse for this justification by faith. This is called justification by faith. For he hath made him... Jesus Christ, to be sin for us, that we who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So this transaction of the Son of God taking our sin and we receiving his uh, righteousness, that's how God solved the sin problem. Okay, this is how mm -hmm. he can make something unclean, clean. Okay. So, um, we're not going to go into depth on our godly edification, but all the Bible is for us, but not all the Bible is to and about us. The letters in the Bible that's directly to us is Romans to Philemon, okay? Um, these letters, well, let me see, They're more like this, okay? So, before that, we have prophecy. This is mystery, and on the other side we have prophecy again. Over here we have the Old Covenant, here we have no covenant, and here we have the New Covenant. Over here we have Israel, in the middle we have the body of Christ. If we take out these pages, we don't have the body of Christ. It becomes just a Jewish book. And over here we have some more of Israel. Okay, so... Um, the godly edification is primarily for us in Romans to Philemon, the 13 letters that Paul wrote. And um, 2 Timothy 3.16 talks about doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction in righteousness. So doctrine declares what's right. Reproof exposes what's not right. Correction tells us how to make it right. And instruction is in righteousness is how to keep it right. So, in um, these books, Romans, 1 and 2 Corinthians, and Galatians, Romans is doctrine, uh, the Corinthian letters are reproof, and the Galatian letter is correction. And they all talk about the cross and God's grace. And, and then later, he will talk about the church in the Ephesian epistles. And the goal is to be the best body of Christ we can be in this world and in the world to come. And then our hope or is the, his coming in First and Second Thessalonians. And then we have the congregation in the pastoral epistles, First and Second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Okay. 
Let's see what's on what's behind this door. Oh, we did that one. Okay. All right. So we know that there are three heavens. The first heaven is what we call the sky, mm -hmm. and here's the earth. And the second heaven is where Satan and his fallen angels are right now. And in the third heaven, we have the Son of God at the right hand of the Father. And right now, the heavens are not clean in his sight. But we're going to replace Satan and his fallen angels. So, the Bible is laid out, prophecy, mystery, prophecy. Prophecy, again, is Genesis to Acts 9, mystery, Romans to Philemon, prophecy, again, Hebrews to Revelation. So, the kingdom of God is made up of two realms, heaven and earth. Paul will say in Ephesians, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, after the great white throne judgment, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. Okay, so Galatians chapter 1, review questions, sentences. So in one sentence, I try to summarize the book, the letter, uh, the chapter, the chapter. Okay. Paul marvels that they are so soon removed from his gospel. Okay. All right, so... I don't want to talk too much about how we are spirit, soul, and body. And when we believe in Christ, his spirit comes into our spirit and we're joined. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. We're one spirit with him. But I do want to point out that in our body is this sinful flesh, even after we're saved. Yep. And we only make it worse if we put ourselves in under Peter's program under the law. Okay, so we know that this is Israel's program. Okay, mm -hmm. this is Israel's program. Jesus Christ is going to be their priest king. And he, um, it, the Bible says that if the priests wash their hands, they have to wash their hands and feet that they die not. That's water baptism right there. Or what's going to happen if they don't get water baptized? They die. They die. They mm -hmm. die. Good. Yeah. So Jesus Christ will be over the 12 apostles who will be over the 12 tribes of Israel. And they're all going to have the spirit of Jesus Christ in them. Okay. So in um, Exodus chapter 19... Verse 5 and 6, the Bible says that now therefore, if, it's an if-then principle, ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. So Israel was to be a kingdom, kingdom of, of priests. priests. And a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Okay? So he's speaking. Moses is, speak, is going to speak these words to the children of Israel. Okay? So, they're going to be a kingdom of priests. Now, how did they do? when Moses was up on the mountain. What did Moses find out when he came down? Yeah, they're making gods and They made idols. the golden calf. They made the golden calf. They didn't even last 40 days. Okay? That's a, that's they failed. Humanist. So they can't be a kingdom priest. Okay? Um, so... The, the God is going to make a kingdom of priests out of his little believing remnant, Peter's group. 
Peter said, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. 1 Peter 2.9 So a royal priesthood is a kingdom of priests, a holy nation. Israel's going to be that holy nation. God is going to help them under the new covenant to be the people that he wanted them to be in the first place. Okay, so we have um, Paul's journeys here, and we have Isles means Gentiles in the Bible, and my website is MarianneManley.com, and the YouTube channel is Salvation, comma, Rightly Dividing, comma, and The Rapture. And truth be told also carries our videos. So um, before we do the felts, um, let's go ahead and um, go over the books. So please follow me. Okay. All right. So I have a few more signs. With the, with the moisture in the air, the tape is not holding. <laughs> so Paul said, For I speak unto you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. So this is the our apostle. And this is the will of God, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. 1 Timothy 2.4 The knowledge of the truth is understanding that Paul is our apostle and the mystery the, the formation of the body of Christ during the dispensation of grace to live in the heavenly places so what is the greatest love of all? Act, the greatest act of love was when Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins yep. he said essentially Father Place his or her blame on me and let them have my righteousness. Jesus Christ knew that the Father was going to impute his righteousness to the believer before he died. He also knew that he was going to be resurrected. Now, Paul did not go, well, what did he say about water baptism? For Christ sent me not to baptize. But to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of none effect. 1 Corinthians 1.17 So, today we don't have as much issue with circumcision as we have with water baptizing. Because a lot of people think they're priests, that they shouldn't die. <laughs> <laughs> so, Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized, this is water baptized, Every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Acts 2.38. That's not our gospel. Okay. So, do you have a retirement plan? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Nancy's getting, working on her retirement plan mm -hmm. in heaven. Eternal mm -hmm. retirement plan. Okay, so there's three things you need to know. You need to know what's the right gospel, so we call this the three rights. What's the right Bible, and right division. So we, we will find out that Paul is going to let them know at the Jerusalem Council in the next chapter that by one cross Christ saved two groups to put his spirit in them, to impute his righteousness to them. Peter's and Paul's group. The Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed at the judgment seat of Christ when we're evaluated for our rewards on earth, our eternal retirement plan, rightly dividing the word of truth. So, he does not mean and divide truth from error, because all the Bible is perfect, without error. He says, divide truth from truth. So, we divide Paul's letters, Romans to Philemon, from 
for us in the body of Christ from the rest of the Bible. And that's how we write the divide. So the body of Christ was the secret mystery hid in God, Ephesians 3, 9, until Christ revealed it to Paul. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit on the throne of his glory, ye shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So, is Peter in the body of Christ? Yes. Is Peter, Peter in the oh, body of Christ? No. 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 Because he's going to be on earth, judging right. the twelve tribes right. um, of Israel. Okay. I, I said that so fast. Uh, here's the gospel of the kingdom. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, the time of Daniel's timeline, in uh, Daniel 9, 24 through 27. And the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. What gospel? The gospel of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The gospel that the kingdom of God was at hand. Because the king was there. Mark 1, 14 and 15. Okay. So, <clears throat> I just have a few more signs. What did God tell us? The body of Christ is God's one true church made up of believers from all nations. And we're going to live eternal in the heavens. We're not coming back now. 2 Corinthians 5.1 Okay. So, for I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceit, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of Gentiles be come in. So that's the rapture. So we're living during Israel's national blindness until the rapture. And the dispensation of grace is, has been grafted in. Do we follow earthly or heavenly instructions? Heavenly. heavenly. Yeah. The spirit. That's how we avoid spiritual darkness. But there are parallels. Are we priests or ambassadors? Ambassadors. 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 Yay. So we cannot be surprised when sinners act like sinners. Get used to living in a more and more evil world, but live above it in all godliness. That's what we're going to do. Because the doctrine, when we understand how to rightly divide, will help us to be, have godliness, godlikeness. When does Christ take possession of the earth? At his second, second coming, second. right? Okay, when does he take possession of the heavens? In the rapture? rapture. I will cover it during, when I read the lesson. Okay, so I was going to show you, I was going to show you something else. All right, let me just show you this and a couple of more, and then we'll do the books. Okay, so this is what Paul said in Romans 16, 25 through 27, how to be established. Now to him that, has the, that is of power to establish you or stabilize you according uh, to my gospel. Why does he call it my gospel if it's about Christ? Because Christ gave it to him. And the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Okay, so it's Jesus Christ according to his heavenly ministry. Which was kept secret since the world began. But now is made manifest. So it's now re been revealed through Paul. And by the scriptures of the prophets. So we're three things that were stabilized by. He, mm, Paul's my gospel. The re uh, preaching of... Jesus Christ according to the revelation of mystery and the rest of the Bible written by the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting God which um, made known unto all nations for the obedience of faith this is how what we have to obey now to God only wise be glory through Jesus Christ forever amen Romans 16 25 through 27 now, this is what Peter said whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all his pro holy prophets since the world began. Acts 3.21 So is something kept secret um, since the world began? 
the same as something spoken by all the prophets since the world began? No. Oh, they're different, right? Mm -hmm. Not the same. Okay, so the mystery of iniquity doth already work. But, um, so it's been going on since Satan, remember? Mm -hmm. And so Paul will say in Ephesians 2, 6, and has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So God already sees us as sitting in the heavenly places. We're already there in, in his mind. And to wait for a son from heaven, whom he has raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. First Thessalonians 1.10. So we're not going through a tribulation. Been delivered from it. Okay, almost done. Part of Satan's policy to be evil is to warn people against Pauline dispensational teaching so they never examine it for themselves. Mm -hmm. So we're going to find out in this chapter, but if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. So if you understand the doctrine, if you rightly divide, you're going to be quickened now during your mortal body to serve God. If you don't know what God is doing now, he can't use you. Okay, so once, when we rightly divide the word of God, it becomes so interesting that we just can't get enough. And this is the verse, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished in all good works. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. So we have a new apostle, Paul. We have a new gospel, justification by faith. A new dispensation of grace. A new agency, the body of Christ. A new audience, all people. A new operating system, grace, not the law. A new ministry, reconciliation, and new destiny, heaven. Satan's policy of evil is to conceal the mystery Christ gave to us through Paul. We fight Satan's lies with God's truth. And that's why we're showing you the verses. We're showing you exactly what God said. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. So the day is going to be when we're raptured to be with Jesus. Remember, it's night until then. So the natural unsaved man cannot understand God's truth. But we have the mind of Christ. That was um, 1 Corinthians 2, 9, uh, 2, 14 and 16. Okay, fear not, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Luke 12, 32. So Peter's group is the little flock who's going to get the kingdom. And Peter preached, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Acts 4.12 why is the name of Jesus so important to be preached? Jesus of Nazareth. Because in the tribulation, someone is going to impersonate Christ. He's called Antichrist. And you need to know that Jesus of Nazareth is the true name of the true Messiah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's go over the books. Our most important book is God's Secret which is an overview of the whole Bible, and I'm going to tell you which are the most popular books now. Okay? An overview of the whole Bible for how to rightly divide the word truth. And that comes in color for $15.95 on Amazon, in all the Amazons around the world, or in black and white for $3.95. And it also comes in hardcover. We have it in Spanish, El Secreto de Dios, and we have it in... Norwegian, and it is also in Hindi and Nepali. And we're looking for more uh, translators. We have Romans, a concise commentary. First, um, oh, and that comes in color or black and white. First Corinthians, a commentary. Second Corinthians, a commentary. Galatians, a commentary. And Grace and I are reading that now and loving it. We have Ephesians, this is very popular right now. 
a commentary. Philippians, Colossians, Philemon, a commentary. The certainty of the pre-tribulation rapture is on 1st and 2nd Thessalonians. And um, on all my books, I give the scripture and then the commentaries between the scripture verses. So you, you don't need to open your Bible. You have it right there. And that um, certainty also comes in color, stunning color. And we have, this is very popular right now. People are reading like 600 pages online. Wow. You know, mm -hmm. actually people have been reading between two and 3,000 pages of my books every month Jeez. online. Wow. And most people have all of my books. But this one, Paul's pastoral epistles, is first and second Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Very popular right now. Then I have AD 34, the year Christ died for our sin. For no, the year Jesus died for all. And this is a children's book, just as God said, with color pictures. And um I ha um, AD 34 is also the same contents as could God have a 7,000 year plan for mankind, which talks about that issue. And um, right now we're doing the Rightly Dividing series. So we have Rightly Dividing Romans, and it's a commentary and on Romans. First Corinthians, Rightly Dividing 1 Corinthians, Rightly Dividing 2 Corinthians, and Rightly Dividing Galatians, that's the one we're doing right now. We're working on it to perfect it. And why was the earth without form, void, and dark? This is very popular. Um, then we have our Acts of the Apostles series. And then we have another book that's very popular right now. Mr. Rapture, read this um, commentary on Hebrews. So, you know, you can read it before you miss the rapture if you want. <laughs> Good idea. Treasure hunt. That's to help your lost loved ones that didn't make the rapture to make it through the tribulation. Okay, Treasure Hunt, Volume 1, 2, and 3 is about, um, it has all of Paul's letters in it. So let's do our felt, and then we'll do our lesson, and we'll be done. Okay. Who was the last person to see Jesus? The last person to see Jesus was Paul. 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 That's right. And Satan said, what? That wasn't prophesied. Okay, so we're going to look now at um, some of the persecution that Paul did of the little flock. So he, this is before he was blinded on the road to Damascus. So in chapter um, Acts 8 1, it says, And Saul was consenting unto his death, that's Stephen, and at that time there was a great persecution against the church, that's Peter's church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles stayed in Jerusalem. Then in Acts uh, 1, uh oh, where's this guy coming from? Okay, I miss. I lost my my the glory of the light around. <laughs> get that glory back. <laughs> yeah, get that glory back. And Saul, this is Acts nine one, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord went unto the high priest. Okay, so he's he's on a mission. And he told King Agrippa, Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? What Paul wanted more than anything else was to be resurrected. And he thought he had blown it. I verily thought with myself that I ought to do things, many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which things... I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. I said, yeah, kill them. Mm -hmm. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme. 
deny Jesus is the Messiah. <laughs> and being exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. He's persecuted them all the way to, you know, towards Damascus, remember? <clears throat> Acts 26, 8 um, and 11. 8 through 11. So, the, and last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. 1 Corinthians 15, 8. So, now, Paul, um, you know, he was blinded by the light of Jesus. He saw Jesus. Jesus spoke to him. Um, and so, let's, then he's going to go into, he's going to go into Damascus. And he's going to see um, Ananias in there. Yeah. But the Lord said unto him, that's Ananias, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So Gentiles, kings, and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So Christ is predicting he's going to suffer you know, he's saying, he's going to suffer for my name's sake. Mm -hmm. Then in Acts 22, 8, Paul said this to the Jews. And I answered, Who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecuted. So when he was persecuting Peter's group, he was persecuting Jesus Christ himself. And in Acts 26, um, 16 through 18, we find out more details about his conversion. Jesus said to him, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which I will appear unto thee. So he's going to show him more revelation. Delivering thee from the people, that's the Jews, and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. So he was sent out in Acts chapter 9. So the body of Christ began with Paul in Acts chapter 9. If we believe that the body of Christ began in Acts chapter 2, we put ourselves under the law. And we're going to frustrate our desire to walk under grace. To open their eyes, to open the Gentiles' eyes, and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Okay, that them that are sanctified by faith that's in me is Peter's group. Peter's group had the Holy Ghost. Remember in Acts 2? Mm -hmm. Get wet? Mm -hmm. Get water baptized, and you you know you'll receive the Holy Ghost. So they had already been sanctified. They had the Spirit of Jesus in them before Paul. But, um, was saved. Okay, that's how they were in Christ before Paul. Okay, so then Paul is going to be let down by in a basket because after three years, the garrison uh, is going to be all around the city of Damascus. And they're going to try to capture Paul. So he's going to get let down by a basket. And then he's going to go to see Peter in Jerusalem. Okay? But Peter and his group, they don't want to see Paul. Because he's the one that was going to persecute them. So who is the one that was bold enough to introduce Paul to Peter and his group? It was Barnabas. Barnabas. Okay, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. So Barnabas is giving Paul's testimony to Peter. And how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem for those 15 days. And he spake boldly in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and disputed against the Grecians, but they went about to slay him. Oh, visit is cut short. Mm -hmm. This is why he was only there for 15 days. Because the Grecian Jews wanted to slay him. 
So that is when he then is put on a boat from Caesarea and goes to Tarsus and starts those churches in Cilicia. Okay, so let's get into our lesson, and it shouldn't be long. We well, should be done by, by noon, because it's only six pages. Okay, so turning your Bible to Galatians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle, not of man, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ, and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia, grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for our sins, that he might be delivered, no, that he might deliver us from the, this present evil world. According to the will of God our, and our Father, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Paul writes that he is an apostle not by man or by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, and immediately clearly states the gospel of Christ, that the Father raised him from the dead, and that the Son gave himself for our sins, in order to deliver us from this present evil world, which was in accordance with the will of God and our Father, his plan, to whom Christ be glory forever and ever. Amen. He sends greetings from all the believers which are with him to the churches of Galatia. Remember what they were? Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, um, Lystra, and Derbe. Those are the churches of Galatia. Okay. Um, where are I? Verse oh. 6. Okay. Um, okay, so... Um, he sends greeting from the believers which are with him of the churches of Galatia. Paul is the apostle of the Gentiles, Romans 11:13, because Jesus Christ and the Father made him that. We have a twofold deliverance. From this present world, Christ will physically deliver us out at the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 1:10, 4:16, 17, and 2 Thessalonians 2, 1. And two, Believers are in the world, but not of this world. Right. We are presently already spiritually delivered out of the evil world. God, who made us spiritually alive to him, already sees us as if he has already raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2, 6. God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, Romans 4, 17, C, and D. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Romans 8, 11. His spirit in us makes our bodies move to action to serve him. As ambassadors, we gladly serve God, by helping the lost to get out of Adam into Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 18 through 21. First, there was a rebellion in heaven, and then there was rebellion on earth. Iniquity was found in Lucifer, the anointed cherub, and he became God's adversary, Satan, and he was cast out of the third heaven. Luke 10, 18, Ezekiel 28, 15. He resides in the second heaven and has access to the earth, Job 1. This present evil world began in the Garden of Eden when Adam disobeyed God after Satan tricked Eve into eating the fruit so they could be as gods. Genesis 3, 5. So this present evil world has gone on for a while and will end when Christ, who was briefly the light of the world, has taken possession of heaven and earth. Before we were saved, we were lost and also living according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. They disobey by not believing the gospel. Ephesians 2, 2. This present evil world system is mostly run by unbelieving sinners, empowered by the prince of the power of the air, Satan. The world has a course that is hurling the world 
along toward a one world government and religion under Antichrist. The wrath or tribulation is also called Daniel's 70th week and Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Shortly after our rapture, Antichrist will begin the seven years of tribulation when he signs a peace treaty with Israel that allows the unbelieving priests to offer animals sacrifices at the rebuilt temple in Jerusalem. Daniel 9:24 and 27. So there's two Israels. There's the unbelieving priests and the believing priests. Those that believe that Christ's sacrifices are already paid for their sins. And they don't need to an offer animals anymore. The Lord Jesus Christ will take possession of heaven in the middle of the tribulation when Satan and the bad angels are cast out into the earth by Michael and the good angels. Revelation 12, 7 through 9. The body of Christ will replace Satan and his angels. The Lord Jesus Christ will take possession of the earth at his second coming, Romans 11, 25 through 29, Hebrews 9, 28. Paul praises God for his glorious plan to rescue believers and creation, Romans 8, 23. God solved our sin problem. The Father's plan of redemption was that by one cross his Son would save two groups. Peter's on earth and Paul's in heaven. The Father remains just while declaring the sinner justified, Romans 3, 21 through 28. Many Galatians were Gauls from France who had settled there. Galatia is a region in Central Asia Minor which includes the cities of Antioch of Pisidia, Iconium, and Lystra, and Derbe. Paul preached justification by faith, Acts 18, 38 and 39, there on his first apostolic journey. When they returned to Antioch in Syria, Paul and Barnabas had a big dispute with the Judaizers that had come into the assembly while they were gone about circumcision, and they went to Jerusalem by revelation to settle the matter, taking Titus with them, Acts 15.1. Paul wrote the Galatian letter in Acts 15.35 shortly after his return to Antioch from the Jerusalem Council, where he had received the right hand of fellowship, Galatians 2, 9, circa 52 A.D. 6. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which ye have than that which we have preached unto you, let it be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preaches any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. Paul wonders in amazement that they are so quickly removed from him who called you into the grace of Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2.14 Unto another gospel. The hymn is the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, Romans 16.25, by Paul and the Pauline elders, which is not another gospel, but there are some who trouble you and would like to pervert the gospel of Christ. It is not another in that they were still preaching Christ's death, burial, and resurrection for salvation, but they were adding law-keeping to living the Christian life. Even in Antioch, some Judaizers, little flock believers who did not recognize Paul, had come in and said that circumcision was necessary for salvation, justification. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, ye cannot be saved. Acts 15, 1. Other Judaizers said circumcision was necessary to live the Christian life. Okay. Sanctification. Okay. But there arose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees who believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses, Acts 15.5. 
The law neither justifies a sinner nor sanctifies a believer. In our fallen bodies, we cannot keep the law perfectly to be saved or sanctified. Both must be done by faith. Paul had received the word had received word that the Galatians were trying to control their flesh by keeping the Jewish laws. Some believers in Galatia were being circumcised, 5.24.11, and keeping the Jewish holy days, 4.10, which was not the instructions Christ gave them through Paul for his heavenly people. The Galatians were mixing God's instruction for his heavenly believers through Paul with God's instruction to his earthly believers through Peter. The doctrine Paul gave to them included how to live for God, their sanctification, 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, and 4. Paul said only the gospel of Christ that he preached is valid now, not the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew 4, 23, 9, 35, 24, 14, Mark 1, 14. God's laws will keep will be kept in the kingdom because of the everlasting new covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, Ezekiel 36, 24 through 28. The gospel of our salvation is how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ took our sins and gives us his righteousness, 2 Corinthians 5, 21. Do not associate with anyone who preaches another gospel, but let him be accursed. Cut him off. Put him out of the assembly so the congregation is not affected by his heretical false instruction. That he may suffer the consequences that God wants to instill for his lack of submission to his word rightly divided. 510, 1 Corinthians 3:17, 2 I mean 2 Timothy 2:15. They need to live according to the truth that Christ gave to Paul. The Judaizers were not teaching the truth, so put them out of this family and stop listening to them. The false minister is not obedient to Christ's gospel to the Gentiles in this dispensation, but is teaching contrary to the truth, which is destructive. They are preaching against God's message for this present time, the dispensation of grace, Ephesians 3.2. Paul's my gospel is justification by faith or the imputed righteousness of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel, let him, them be accursed. For emphasis and to make sure they heard him, Paul repeats his warning or curse. His vehement language and abruptness reveals his anger concerning their spiritual condition. In the next dispensation, an angel will preach from heaven, Revelation 14, 6. So if God did not have a different dispensation, there would be a contradiction. But as we know, there's no contradictions in the Bible. Satan is waging a doctrinal warfare to lure the body of Christ away from Pauline truth so they are ineffective in their service to God. Satan wants to keep believers ignorant of the word of God rightly divided, mixing grace and law. The truth is that the flesh was not redeemed and <coughs> cannot be reformed. It must be mortified, Romans 8.13. Many believers are surprised when they discover that after they are saved, their sin nature still resides in their mortal bodies. Our flesh did not get saved when we did. Our sin nature resides in our bodies, and we need our bodies to be a vehicle for our inner man, our soul and spirit. Our spirit and soul. Until we get our immortal, glorified bodies, 1 Corinthians 15, 51-54, Philippians 3, 21. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 17. There is a war inside every believer between the flesh and the spirit. This war forces us to mature and to decide moment by moment to do what is right. Paul will explain that they were saved by faith, justification, and must live by faith, sanctification, in these fallen bodies as we go through the details of our lives until we get our new bodies, 5.16. Anyone in a fallen body is subject to sin, and only God's Spirit using His Holy Word can work in the believer to keep him from sin. 
circumcision and the keeping of the Jewish holy days are not necessary for his heavenly people. We cannot mix Peter, law, and Paul, grace. Peter is part of the royal priesthood and will live in the kingdom on earth. Israel was to be a kingdom of priests, Exodus 19, 5 and 6, a royal priesthood and a holy nation, 1 Peter 2, 9. But we will live eternal in the heavens, 2 Corinthians 5, 1. Galatians is reproof for not... Uh, for, um, for departing from living according to the doctrine of sanctification given in Romans. I'm just going to say the doctrine given in Romans. Doctrine declares what is right. Reproof exposes what is not right. Correction tells us how to make it right. And instruction in righteousness reveals how to keep it right. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. 10. Uh, through 12. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me was not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. For am I now seeking to persuade men or God? My motive is not to be a man pleaser, but a Christ server. But I certify, testify, you believers, that neither receive, that I neither, that the gospel which was preached of me is not something I learned from a man. For I neither received it from a man, neither was I taught it by a man, but by revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul formally certifies or attests to the fact that the gospel that he preached was directly from Christ and was not invented by man. Christ waited until he saved Paul to reveal God's solution to man's sin problem. What was the gospel that Paul received from Christ? It was justification by faith. Paul received the gospel that saved them independently, personally, by direct revelation of Jesus Christ, not from the twelve or from any other man. 13-14 for ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the Jews' religion above many mine equals in mine own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. For you have heard of my former manner of lives in time past before my conversion in the Jews' religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and tried to exterminate the believing remnant of Israel, Peter's group. Acts 8, 1, 9, 1. Paul told King Agrippa that he often punished the kingdom saints with fanatical zeal, being exceedingly mad against them. Acts 26, 9-12. Paul thought they were a heretical sect and that Jesus of Nazareth was an imposter and that he was serving God, John 16, 2. I profited financially and in status in the Jews' religion, excelling more than most of my equals in my own nation, being exceptionally zealous of the traditions of my forefathers. Acts 2, 22, 3, Philippians 3, 4, and 6. Remember, he was a Pharisee, used to Pharisees. The religion that God had begun, Judaism, had deteriorated to the Jews' religion because of the corrupt tradition of men had, uh, that added to a, and diluted God's word. Mark 7, 9, Colossians 2, 8, 1 Peter 1, 18, 15 through 17. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathen, immediately I confer not with flesh and blood, Neither went I up to Jerusalem to them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again to Damascus. But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's Israel's womb, and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen, all lost Jews and Gentiles, I did not consult with any humans but Christ. Nor did I go up to Jerusalem to confirm with them which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia, probably Mount Sinai, 425, 
And then I return to Damascus. When did Christ give Apostle Paul a new ministry and message that was distinct from the twelve? It pleased God to snatch Saul of Tarsus out of Israel's program after Israel had refused a one-year extension of mercy, a renewed offer of the kingdom through Peter's group. The son had asked the father to give Israel one more year to repent. Lord, let them alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Luke 13, 6 through 9. The fig tree bore very little fruit of faith after it was fertilized with the Holy Ghost and heard it preach that Jesus of Nazareth was the Messiah. Israel fell as a nation in Acts 7 when the religious leaders rejected the kingdom the king and their kingdom and stoned the Holy Ghost filled little flock member Stephen committing the blasphemy of the Holy Ghost spoken of by Jesus Christ the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven neither in this world neither in the world to come Matthew 12 31 32 Saul was a ringleader in the stoning of Stephen, Deuteronomy 13, 6-11, Acts 7, 58. And therefore, he could not be saved if God began an entirely, and therefore he could only be saved if God began an entirely different um, or new dispensation. God did show him grace and open up a new dispensation which began with Saul's salvation on the road to Damascus in Acts 9 and ends at the rapture. Paul was born out of due time, a premature birth, from his mother Israel. 1 Corinthians 15.8 Without being prophesied in the Bible, Jesus of Nazareth dramatically saved Paul on the road to Damascus in Acts 9. Acts 9, 3-20, 22, 1-16, 26, 9-18. Paul was not saved by the gospel of the kingdom. Paul was uniquely saved by grace while the gospel of the kingdom was still being preached. The nation of Israel stumbled... Okay, this is the last page. Um, on, on their Messiah at the cross, Romans 9, 31 through 33, and fell in Acts 7 with the stoning of Stephen, Romans 11, 11, 12. But the little flock continued until they were placed on hold by God at the Jerusalem Council in Acts 15. The return after a year in heaven of the glorified risen Lord Jesus Christ to save Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus in Acts 9, Nine. even surprised Satan. <laughs> Since the dispensation in grace was completely unprophesied. 1 Corinthians 2, 6-8. Satan had expected that God would send the wrath and judge the unbelievers of Israel. But instead, Christ interrupted prophecy and inserted the mystery, delaying the wrath. Paul was the first sinner saved into the body of Christ, 1 Timothy 1.16. And the due time testifier of all that Christ accomplished on the cross, Acts 20.21, 20, Titus 1.3, Romans 3.26. If God had not shown mercy, um, him mercy, he would have been punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, 2 Thessalonians 1, 9. God revealed his son in him. Paul had the life of Christ working in him, 2.20, 2 Corinthians 4, 11, uh, 7, 11, 18 through 20. Then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to see Peter and abode with him 15 days. But others of the apostles saw I none, save James, the Lord's brother. Now the things which I write to you, behold, before God I lie not. Paul preached that Christ is the Son of God and was in Damascus in Arabia for a total of three years, but had to escape that city by being left down by the wall in a basket. Acts 9, 20 through 25, 2 Corinthians 11, 32, 33. He then went up to Jerusalem to see Peter, but had to leave after 15 days because the Jews wanted to kill him. Acts 9, 26-30. Peter first heard Paul's testimony from Barnabas. Acts 9, 27. 
He saw none of the other apostles, but met James, the Lord's brother. God inspired Paul to constantly defend his distinct apostleship because it was constantly under attack, and still is. The things that I write to you observe before God that it is the truth, and I lie not. Paul understood Christ's ministry through Peter to the little flock, Luke 12, 32. But Christ had a different ministry through Paul, 21 through 23. Afterwards, I came into the region of Syria and Cilicia and was unknown by face unto the churches of Judea which were in Christ. But they had heard only that he which persecuted us in time past now preaches the faith which he once destroyed, and they glorified God in me. He then preached in his, his hometowns, Tarsus is in Cilicia, and in Sir, Syria, um, Acts 9.30, his face was not known to the churches of Judea which were in Christ. The Messianic churches were in Christ as a result of trusting in the Son of God, to sit on David's throne, the gospel of the kingdom, Acts 2, 30 through 38. Peter's group was sanctified before us, and more will be after our rapture, Acts 26, 18, 1 Peter 5, 14. But they had only heard that he who used to persecute him in the past now preaches the faith which he once tried to destroy. The Jewish believing remnant, Peter's group, glorified God because he had saved his and their worst enemy. Paul is the one apostle of the one body of Christ. The twelve apostles will judge the twelve tribes of Israel on earth. Matthew nineteen twenty-eight. Thank you for joining us. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Holy Father God, thank you for helping us to sort out these um, chapters and find out so many riches. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bye, everybody. See you next week, chapter two. <laughs> Cheese.